Hi, howdy. My name is John, and this video is a series of tag videos. I thought I would take a page out of Jeremy P's playbook and do multiple tag videos in one. And hopefully, if I do a voiceover, this will be a little bit easier to edit. And hey, you get to enjoy some footage of my lava lamp. So, win-win, right? The first tag is the 20 bookish questions tag. I was actually tagged by three people for this one. I was first tagged by Book Loving Nerd. I was also tagged by Hugo at Scientist Reading World. And lastly, I was tagged by Jolene Reads. I hope you go and check all of these channels out. There will be a link in the description below. The original was a Goodreads post, which I'll provide a link to in the description below. Question number one, how many books is too many books in a book series? Well, if you've watched my channel more than once, you know that uh, I'm a big fan of Piers Anthony Xanth novels, which currently there's 44 no uh, novels in. So as long as each novel is good, um, there's no such thing as too many in a series. Now, the Xanth series, there are a few in the middle that you know, they're just okay, but uh, I really enjoyed the last several in the series. Question number two, how do you feel about cliffhangers? Again, I'm going to take a page out of Jeremy Fee's playbook and say that only the second book in a trilogy is allowed to end on a cliffhanger. Question number three, hardcover or paperback? I prefer to read a hardcover if I can find a good deal on one. But I very rarely buy hardcovers new. I definitely uh, like hardcovers uh, on a paperback budget. Question number four, favorite book. Now, this is a hard one. I do have a lot of books that I'm really fond of. Uh, for the sake of answering this question, I'm going to go with Golem in the Gears by Piers Anthony. This is the ninth in his Xanth series. Question number five, least favorite book. For this one, I'm going to have to go with Tahanu by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is the fourth book in her Earthsea series. Question number six, love triangles, yes or no? I don't mind a love triangle as long as it's well done. Unfortunately, I have read some that are not well done. Question seven, the most recent book you just couldn't finish. That would be Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This is the first book in the Wheel of Time series. I got about halfway, realized I had about 400 more pages to go, and said, yeah, I'm done. I may pick it back up at some point. We'll see. Question eight, a book you're currently reading. I just finished The Naked Sun by Isaac Asimov. This is the second book in his Robot series. Question nine, Last book you recommended to someone. This is Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. This is the, the first book in his Great Coat series. Uh, I gave a friend of mine uh, my copy of the book so that uh, he could read it. Question 10, oldest book you've read, publication date. This isn't actually the oldest that I've read. Uh, I just don't remember exactly what I've read, and I don't want to necessarily try to find dates and whatnot, but according to Goodreads, the oldest thing that I have read by publication date is Livy's uh, History of Rome, the first five books. Question 11, newest book you've read by publication date. This would be Skeleton Key by Piers Anthony. This is the 44th book in his Zant series, and it was published in February of 2021. Question 12, favorite author. I'm assuming you're new to my channel, so I will go ahead and answer this question. It's Piers Anthony. Question 13, buying books or borrowing books? I much prefer to buy, although uh, I have started going to the library and I'm enjoying my trips there and borrowing books from there. Question 14, a book you dislike that everyone else seems to love? The answer to this one would be The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, I, re I first read this book as an adult, and it just doesn't work for me. 
Question 15. Bookmarks or dog ears? Now, I did dog ear books when I was younger, but uh, now I always use bookmarks. Question 16. A book you can always reread. I can always reread one of the books of the Encyclopedia Brown series. Question 17. Can you read while hearing music? I usually do not listen to music while I'm reading. I might be able to listen to some instrumental music while reading, but definitely nothing with lyrics. Question 18. One POV or multiple POVs? With POV meaning point of view. Uh, I enjoy both. I actually think I enjoy multiple point of views better. Question 19. Do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? It's very rare that I can read a book in a single day. It has to be a really short book in order for me to pull that off. So generally speaking, it's over multiple days. Question 20. Who do you tag? For this one, I'm going to tag David Wiley. Very Literary Carry, and b and B Books. Alrighty, well let's move on to the Moody Book Tag. I was tagged for this by Amy Harbert and Pages. She has an amazing channel. I hope you go check her out. What's great about Amy is she does not give star ratings for her books. She rates her books in blossoms. So if you've ever watched one of my wrap-up videos, you know that I do a flower update. So, her Blossom ratings are right up my alley. The original creator was Slanted Spines, and I'll provide links in the description below. Question 1. Do you consider yourself a mood reader? No, I do not. Question 2. Do you set TBR lists, and do you stick to them? I do set a TBR. I haven't really shared it, my TBR with anyone lately. I do occasionally make substitutions. There are a few categories where uh, I kind of switch things up a bit, but uh, generally speaking, I do stick to the TBR I set for myself. Question three, do books affect you emotionally? Does the mood of a book rub off on you? Yes, to a degree. I mean, not very strongly, but uh, you know, I am human. So uh, occasionally uh, I will catch a little bit of a feeling from a book. Question four, when you're feeling sad, what do you read? Or do you not read when sad? Generally speaking, if I am sad, I'm going to read a happy book or a funny book to try to help to uh, improve my mood. Question five, most often do you use reading to escape, to learn, or to critically reflect? Now, I do enjoy uh, reading to escape. I also enjoy reading to learn. But of the two, I'm going to say I most often read to escape. Question six, what is a book that made you laugh out loud? For this one, I'm going to pick Fast Forward by Martha Jones. She also has a booktube channel, and I'll provide a link to her channel in the description. Question seven, what is a book that has made you cry? Or, if you don't cry, one that really moved you. Now, here again, I am a heroic man, so I do not cry at books. One that, uh, you know, kind of uh, made me a little wistful, I guess you could say, was The Soul Forge by Margaret Weiss. This is the first book in the Dragonlance Raceland Chronicles series. Question A. What is a book that you didn't even know how you felt about. For this one, I'm going to have to pick the second and third books of the Earthsea series, this being the Tombs of Adawan and The Father of Shore. These books are by Ursula K. Le Guin. I read these books and didn't really get much of an emotional reaction from either one of them. Question 9. Are you more likely to read on a sunny day or on a cloudy day? Now, I'm more likely to read on a cloudy day because on sunny days, I have outside chores that I need to do. So I try to read every day, but I'm much more likely to read more on cloudy days. Question 10. Do you usually set the mood when you read? Music, lights, smells, etc. No. Question 11. 
Can you leap from book to book, or do you need buffer time between them? That really depends on the book. Sometimes there are moments where I need to take a little bit of time uh, after reading a book. Now, there are times when I need to take time to catch up on everything else that I need to do after reading a book because I've read the book and not gotten those other things done. For this one, I want to tag Jolie Reads. I want to tag Andrew's Wizardly Reads. And then I want to tag a new-to-me channel, Read Becca. Next, we have the Most Brutal Would You Rather Bookish Book Tag. I was tagged for this by Realm of Words and Pages, and I didn't catch who the original tag creator was. I will provide a link to the video done by Realm of Words and Pages. Question number one, would you rather have only your favorite book for the rest of your life or be stuck with all the Goodreads one-star rated books? Definitely going to go with my favorite book. I do not want to be stuck reading only one star rated books. Question number two, would you rather be stuck in lifetime servitude under your most hated antagonist or relieving through the scariest book you've ever read with your most favorite side character? So I would definitely pick reliving through the scariest book and I would pick as my favorite side character Tasselhoff Burfoot. Um, me and Tasselhoff we could get through any situation because Tasselhoff knows how to take care of his friends. Anything I lose, he's going to pick up and, and keep for safekeeping. Um, he always has a happy-go-lucky attitude. So he is the man for me. Or rather, he's the kinder for me. Question three. Would you rather marry the enemy of your most favorite character or be with your most favorite character and be the one to kill them in the end? Yeah, I, I'm not going to marry the enemy of my most favorite character. So uh, I am going to be with my most favorite character and then be the one that has to kill him. Kind of like when Buffy had to kill Angel to save the world. Question four, would you rather have a dragon the size of a large dog or a Pegasus you can't ride on as a pet? I'll take the dragon on this one. Question five. Would you rather be the hero or heroine in a story and die in the end, or be the most hateful antagonist and live? I'd definitely rather be the hero and die in the end. Question six. Would you rather be killed off by your most beloved book character or loved unconditionally by your most hated book character? Again, I'm going to go with killed off by my most beloved book character. Question seven. Assuming they both know you equally well and they love you the same, would you rather keep your best friend or your most favorite book crush? Well, you know how guys always say bros before hoes, but yet when a bro meets a hoe, it always becomes hoe before bro. I don't know how that works, but uh, I'd rather keep my best friend. Question eight, would you rather have all your favorite books but never be allowed to read them or be able to read all the books from your most disliked genre. So what's the point of having books if you can't read them? And while I'm not a big fan of romance books, I, I would eventually pick one up and read it every now and again. Question nine, would you rather go on a quest with five of your most favorite book characters where you lose them along the way or rule over five of your most hated book characters. I'm going to go with go on a quest with five of my most favorite book characters. Uh, I'd rather have a, a good time with the people that I'm around. The last question is, would you rather live in your favorite book series or write a book with your favorite author? Now, this one's really difficult. Obviously, if you've paid attention to this video, you know that my favorite series is the Xanth series, and it's by Piers Anthony. So, do I want to live in Xanth, or do I want to write a novel with Piers Anthony? This is a conundrum. I think, I'm, I, think I would actually pick to write a book with Piers Anthony. For this one, I'm going to tag Lady Jane Books, 
Jeremy Fee, and pay from attention. There's no telling what pay is going to do with these questions, but I am looking forward to the video. The next tag is the JFK book tag. This tag was created by Very Literary Carrie, and I was also tagged by her. Carrie has a great channel, but uh, she's a bit of a strange woman. She obsesses with John F. Kennedy Jr. for some reason, and she has really bad taste in candy. I'm not sure what's up with that girl. She did create an interesting tag. Question one. Ten of us and one more. Rose and Joe Sr. had a boat called Ten of Us to signify the ten members of the Kennedy clan. With the birth of Ted, the family named another boat one more. What book with a large cast of characters would you recommend? This book is going to be Dragons of Autumn Twilight by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Now, this isn't necessarily the best written book that I've ever read, but the character development in these, this book and then the two sequels is among the best that I've read. Question 2, PT109. What is your favorite book featuring a harrowing survival, rescue, or war story? This one's going to be Nightmare by Piers Anthony. This is the ninth book in the Xanth series. In this book, Xanth is invaded by a division of Hannibal's troops. They kind of get lost on their way to Rome, and they wind up in Xanth. Question three, Addison's disease. What is your favorite book that deals with disease or the medical field? This is Coop by C. Everett Coop. Uh, Dr. Coop was the Surgeon General during the Reagan administration, and this is his memoir. Question 3. Camelot. What real or imagined dynasty would you like to read more about? Uh, a book I would really like to read is Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and this is a book set in ancient China. Question 5. High Hopes. Frank Sinatra re-recorded this song, for Kennedy's 1960 presidential campaign. If you ran for office, what would your campaign song be? For the first election, I would choose Rise by Caroline Jones. This has a really upbeat uh, and positive message in the song. And then for my re-election campaign, I would go with Everything is Awesome, which is from the Lego movie. Question six, we choose to go to the moon. Name the last book you read that was set in space. Uh, this is The Naked Sun by Isaac Asimov. Uh, this time, the human detective must go to a one of the outer world planets to solve a murder. Question 7. Coconut. The coconut shell JFK carved a rescue message on during the PT-109 incident was encased in plastic and used as a paperweight in the Oval Office. Do you have any neat desk items or mementos? Now, I'm perfectly uh, positive that Carrie used me as the inspiration for this question because she is in love with my lava lamps. I'm convinced the only reason she watches my channel is for my lava lamps. She doesn't really care about me. She only wants to see the lava lamps. So obviously I've got those lava lamps. I also have a lighter that was made from a Navy anti-aircraft round. This was my dad's, who served in the U.S. Navy. Question 8. Scandal. What personal or political scandal would you like to read more about? Don't really have an answer for this one because I'm not really a scandal person. Question 9. Peace Corps. What book made you a better person? The answer here is none of them. Every single book that I've read has darkened my soul just a little bit more. I am teasing, of course. For this one, I'm going to say Coach Broyles' Playbook for Alzheimer's Caregivers, a practical tip, guide, plus bonus tips and strategy, and this is by Frank Bowles. Coach Broyles wrote this from his experience taking care of his wife when she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I read this book shortly after my mother got her diagnosis, 
and it was a great guide for me over the next 10 years. Question 10, conspiracy. What are your thoughts on the Kennedy assassination? My thoughts are that anyone who obsesses about the Kennedy assassination is a weirdo, and they need to get a life. Of course, I'm just teasing Carrie. I really don't have any strong thoughts on the Kennedy assassination. It's not something I know enough about to say whether or not Oswell acted alone or whether he, uh, you know, had outside help. So uh, I'll leave the conspiracies to carry on that one. All right, for this one, I want to tag Bookworm Adventure Girl. Steve talks about books and stuff and Joanna. Next, we have the Universes Collide tag. I was tagged for this by Jeremy Fee, and the original is by Mason in the Dark. Prompt number one, the switch-up. Choose two protagonists from different series that you would like to see swap. First, I want to see Dritz Stewarden in Xanth. I'd like to see him take on a tangle tree. Next, I would like to see Bink, the main character in A Spell for Chameleon, the first book in the Xanth series, in Forgotten Realms. Question two, V is for villainy. Choose a villain you would like to see get their own story. For this one, I'm going to pick Lord Soth from the Dragonlance Chronicles. Question three, the adaptation. Choose a character you would like to see get novelized. For this one, I'm going to pick Bowen from Dragonheart. I want to see what Bowen was doing in the 12 years between when Prince Anan gets his dragon heart and then when the action picks back up. Question four, the crossover. Choose two characters from different universes you would like to see interact. I really want to see Ford Prefect from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy interact with the Weasley twins from the Harry Potter universe. Question five, tonal shift. Choose a story to give a different tone or genre to. Unfortunately, I don't really have an answer for this one. This next question was added by Epic Tales. It is evil versus arguably worse. For this one, I'm going to pick the Dominator from the Black Company series, and I want to see him go up against General Woundwart from Watership Down. For this series of questions, I want to tag Margaret Pinard, Beth Ann Bruninga Sokolar, and Scientist Reading World. Now, when Jeremy Fee did his first six tag video in one, I told him that I was going to one up him and do seven in one. But uh, on this one, I'm going to keep it just as six. I am going to settle for a tie with Jeremy. The last tag that I'm going to do this video is the Can You Adapt It book tag. I will tag for this one by Jeremy Fee, and the original is by Raul Reeds. Question number one, what is your favorite book adaptation? For this one, this is the 1994 version of The Stand. Question two, what is your least favorite adaptation? For this one, I'm going to say the 2020 version of The Stand. Question three, if you could adapt any book, which one would it be and why? I would really like to see In the Balance by Harry Turtle Dove adapted into a miniseries. This book has a large cast of characters over the many theaters of World War II. Plus, it's got aliens. Who doesn't love aliens? Question four, what's one adaptation that was portrayed perfectly? For this one, I'm going to say the movie Gettysburg. This was an adaptation of the novel Killer Angels by Michael Shara. Question five, if you could star in any book adaptation, which one would it be and which character would you like to play? I would like to play Gray Murphy from Man from Mundania. This is the 12th book in the Zant series. Mundania is the name for the non-magical world. Question six, when it comes to adapting a novel, what's your preferred media? 
TV miniseries, or a film. This really depends on the novel. Like the Harry Potter series, those are perfect as movie adaptations. If Xanth were ever to get adapted, I think those would work really well as movies too. There are some series that work best as miniseries. The Game of Thrones books would not work as movies. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, World War series really needs to be miniseries as well. Question 7. If you could change anything from a recent adaptation, what would it be? In the book Wild by Cheryl Strayed, Cheryl describes how she came across a Bob Marley t-shirt. In the movie, this explanation is omitted. You do briefly get to see the t-shirt in one of the scenes, but we never understand how Cheryl came across it. So I would like that scene to have been added into the movie. Question 8. Is there a book adaptation better than the actual book? If so, which one? For this one, I'm going to say The Maze Runner. I actually enjoyed the movie more than I enjoyed the book. And then question nine is, can you tag it? Tag your friends. I'm going to tag Summer from Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats. I'm going to tag Katja, Read, Write, Create. And finally, I'm going to tag Sandy at Miss Reads A Lot. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.